A reading from Matthew chapter 25, beginning at verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When do we see you, a stranger, and invite you in? Or need in clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go and visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick? or in prison, and did not help you, he will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for the one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. At first glance, this parable appears to have little to say about environmental issues. It describes a coming judgment when people will be separated into those who helped the people less fortunate than themselves and who responded with compassion towards those who were hungry, thirsty, imprisoned, or in need of hospitality and welcome, and those who did not. It is a parable which challenges us to recognize who is in need and to respond. Jesus identifies himself with those who need loving care and even goes to it so far as to suggest that in ministering to others, we are ministering to him. And in ignoring and disregarding others, we are ignoring and disregarding him. But what does this have to do with the environment and creation care? Well, that depends, I think, on how you define creation. What do you think creation means? Often, we use the term creation when what we really mean is the non-human creation. We forget that we human beings are part of creation. But when we speak of creation care or safeguarding the integrity of creation, we are speaking about the whole of creation, humans and non-humans alike. It isn't an either or, care for the natural world or care for people. Striving for all creation to live in harmony will be the benefit of all. Because there is a very real human cost 
to climate change and ecological degradation. And that cost is more people becoming hungry, thirsty, sick, or homeless. The World Health Organization predicts that between 2030 and 2050, climate change is expected to cause approximately 250,000 deaths annually from malnutrition, malaria, diarrhea, and heat stress. It suggests that children, particularly those already living in global poverty, are amongst those most vulnerable. Human need and environmental problems are intimately connected. Those living in poverty cannot be ex expected to adhere to sustainable practices. They will do whatever is necessary to survive. We can expect nothing less. Whilst environmental problems inevitably hit the poorest and those already vulnerable hardest. Pope Francis, in his powerful appeal to all people of goodwill, insists that addressing poverty, caring for the vulnerable, and addressing the environmental crises are intimately linked and essential to our vocation, both as Christians and as human beings. As the situation worsens, there will be an inevitable temptation to look inward, to prioritise our own needs, to forget about those suffering in other parts of the world, or even to blame them as they fight for a standard of living that we take for granted. Against this backdrop, it is important to heed the words of Jesus. Whatever you do, for the least of my brothers and sisters, you do for me. Amen.